are doing our Nerdcast tribute of the G.I. Joe toy line and cartoon series. I want to introduce our panel here. We got Jesse, Zombie JLT1. We got Chris of Big Family Gaming. We got our host, Brady, Be Radical, and me, your boy, Retro Ryan. So, any pickups to start things out? I had a small mail call, and I, and it wasn't honestly. I, it is kind of relatively small. It's about uh, six Dreamcast games. Um, six. Just, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go for working on. I like having like a goal, right? You know, a collecting goal. Right. Yeah. It's uh, easy to attend, so I'm working on the Sega All Stars set for the Dreamcast. Um, and what does that so, include? So there's 17 games for the Sega wow. All Stars. <laughs> um, so again, not nothing crazy. Um, I actually had already owned one of the harder to find ones, which is um, um, which uh, hold on, <laughs> Power Stone, Power Stone. Sorry, Power Stone. Power Stone Sega All Stars variant is one of the harder to find ones. I I've had it for a little while. Um, and then uh, the next hardest for one to find that I'm on the lookout for is Ready to Rumble Boxing. Nice. For There's those one that, Power Stone's kind of like Super Smash, right? For those that don't know. Yeah. Yeah, before long before, well, shortly before, there was no Smash Brothers, but um, all the rest of them are somewhat affordable and and cheap. I mean, relatively, right? Like Marvel versus Capcom, that's not a cheap game any way you cut it. Any of them. Any of them, but I was able to get. That was in my lot of six. I was able to get. Um, Marvel versus Capcom as well. Nice. So, um, but, but the Ready to Wormble one is is kind of difficult to find. There's only one copy on eBay, and he's asking two hundred dollars, and I'm not, I'm not gonna pay that. So. Yeah. For my pick, I just got um, all those turtles I pre-ordered, like almost a year ago, like January of uh january 2021 so i was like eight months ago or whatever um i ordered the the two turtle six packs that are like the original four turtles so it's like the heroes pack and the villains is how they designate it so it's like the original four turtles splinter and shredder is in that hero six pack and then the villain six pack which is like um you know bebop rock steady crane Slash, uh, etc. All those guys. So mm -hmm. that finally came through. Very I, nice. I haven't gotten shit. <laughs> <laughs> I actually picked up. Um, let's see here. I picked up a new set of headphones that are actually both wireless uh, and you can connect a audio cable to them to use an audio jack if you choose to. They are actually em uh, embroidered with the Ghostbusters sign on both sides. Oh, Pretty nice. Sweet. Pretty sweet little set of earphones here. And I actually added two... Uh, new pieces to my Crow collection. For those of you who don't know, I'm actually a big fan of the Crow. The graphic novel, the movies. I'm trying to collect a lot of the figurines now that they're becoming more available. Uh, I actually added two pieces of the movies to my collection. One is a uh, collector's edition of the third movie. Uh, which has m deleted scenes, commentary, all that kind of stuff that nerds like me enjoy and then i actually got my hands on a 
uh, promotional promotional videotape for the second film. And this is the type of tape that movie companies would actually send to rental stores like Blockbuster and Hollywood Video to actually air in the, in the stores. I don't know which one this came from because they took the store label off of it, unfortunately. But uh, it's a rough cut of the film that was in theaters. And like I said, it was the promotional tape that uh, movie rental places would actually show in the stores that you'd see on the monitors and everything. So I thought that was a cool little collection piece. Oh, sweet. Very nice. Very nice. How much? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, don't recall, I don't recall what I spent on it, actually. <laughs> well, with the recent pickups done, let's go ahead and cue up that G.I. Joe American Heroes. Roll that beautiful footage. That beautiful bean footage. <laughs> I don't want to right off the bat, Destro and Cobra Commander are my favorite characters. Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow for me. At Who least they? until they introduced uh, Sergeant Slaughter. The thing was, too, like, the vehicles really made this this toy line stand out. I mean, the you know, like wh where's where's you had a line like Turtles or He Man. You could you could I mean there weren't maybe there's maybe ten vehicles right that people even remember, but mm -hmm. I mean the GI Joe line. I mean we're talking maybe twenty thirty vehicles and the sets the USS flag that was just like uh, that is big still the biggest uh, toy toy place that ever made right I, oh I, yeah i had that growing up oh yeah lucky uh, luck. it wasn't complete and it was never in the house because it wouldn't fit but i played <laughs> <laughs> i played the hell out of it outside that's what uh what billy from the game chasers said too is that the flag was so huge that he had to leave it outside i think either his house or his grandparents house and would play with it um, on the porch. And when you look at commercials of that thing, yeah, that thing was freaking a monster, man. Well, I didn't know a single person who owned it, honestly. I know, and imagine, like, the on a retail level, what they'd have to sacrifice as far as, far as a shelf space. floor spaces on that. Uh -huh. Mm-hmm. That's why most... That's why most collectors keep it in the box. They don't have it assembled. Now, I'm guessing the price was, what, $100 on that? I can't imagine $200. Any I think spent. so. Yeah, so it probably was $100. Which, you know, at the time, that's a lot of money. Yeah. I think mm -hmm. my dad found mine at a flea market. But, you know, it, it always makes sense to have a massive playset because why? Because then they're going to want – because the thought is to have the kid fill it up with the vehicles and the, and the figures. You know, you're, you're going to have this big playset, and the more it's bare, the more you're going to want to fill it up with more figures over time. Mm hmm Yeah, G.I. Joe always seemed like a toy line that was geared more towards selling the vehicles rather than the figurines. Like the figurines were the accessory. And let's just think about like this hole that was filled as far as like this toy line, right? All you had was army men back in the day, right? You had those generic fucking. Yeah. Plastic. Who doesn't remember those, right? Like for a dollar, yeah. you'd get this massive plastic bag of green Getting army. Toy men. Story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so this was like the legit line to come out. To really do like the Army Navy like justice in a toy line, it really filled that Americana that just the, the weapons that just you could get the tanks, you could get the choppers, you could get you know all these planes you can get. It just it just filled that void that it it wasn't a market for, and it coincided with the with the cartoon series. 
So it, it really was um that that huge audience that was going to get reached by this line. Mm -hmm. I had some of these shows, as a matter of fact, uh, mostly because I we yeah my uncle and I were watching the cartoon, and uh, even more pop uh, in more popular than the show was the actual GI Joe the movie from uh, eighty six eighty seven. Now these were what three inch figures, roughly yeah about three inches, and a half, three and a half inch. So the the scale was key. Even though I tend to like more like the five inch figures, the why was the scale of three and a half inch key right? Because they had to fit in all the vehicles. Mm -hmm. So otherwise, the vehicles would have had been that much bigger if they were five inch figures. Right, along with the Star Wars line, which was about the right. same size as well. Exactly. The the popularity of it. Oh, there's a Sky Striker, I think. Did you see the Sky Striker, or is that it? No. And, like, to me, one of the only negatives is, like, oh, so cool. good lord, are the accessories easy to fucking lose with a three-and-a-half-inch figure. I mean, it's why they're all gone for the Star Wars. It's why they're all... Like, at least the Masters of the Universe, some of that shit was kind of big. Yeah. It's harder to fall behind a couch cushion or, like, you know, get sucked up by a vacuum. You know, but these were like tiny ass accessories on this shit. Right. You got some of that G.I. Joe cereal uh, zombie? Oh, yeah. Yep. I was lucky enough to snag some of that at a young age. What would you compare that to? What did a G.I. Joe cereal taste like? Pretty much like any of those honey based cereals, like, um, like those Quaker O's. It was kind of similar to that, or the Batman cereal, if you remember that, where it was like, it, it almost had this, uh, it was like a puff, honey puff kind of cereal texture to it. It like, almost tasted like you're eating styrofoam. Like the honey smacks? <laughs> yeah, kind of like that. Kind of like that. Except honey smacks outlived the test of time somehow. <laughs> you know what it means to me? Like, like take a show like He-Man, right? Where you had... With He-Man, a lot of times, like, a villain would only, that's even a major villain in the toy line would get only maybe one or two episodes. Like, this is a toy line, G.I. Joe, where a lot of these characters would come back and forth. Like, they would be reoccurring a lot in the series. And this is, oh, yeah. just, like, a lot of characters to fucking utilize over time. When you talk about a line that had, what, from, like, the early 80s into the mid-90s, into the mid -90s, they had, what, like, 150 characters in this fucking line? It's a massive line. Mm hmm Each one with a unique code name and profession. Yeah. You know? And because of that, I'm sure I had some access or, you know, some vehicles. I'm sure I had um some of the figures. I just I don't remember what I had. I don't remember. And it was never specific enough for me to be like, oh my gosh, this is my favorite, you know. But but thing. Chris, I bet you were kind of like me in in the in that this, right? So when I would go in, like, a KB toy store, but my grandma was treating me to, like, a toy or something, like, as a surprise, I would, a lot of times, it wasn't just about, like, I only like Turtles, I only like He-Man. I would go to whatever was, like, badass, right? Whatever caught my eye. Like, I remember getting, like, a Captain Power figure once because I thought the fucking vac metal was cool, right? I remember getting, like, a G.I. Joe. What's the dude with the gloves? The boxer uh, and the mm -hmm. crocodile because I thought that guy was fucking awesome. So, like, I would just, I was one of those types that wasn't so much, like, what is my show? I was just, like, what's sticking out to me on the shelf? Yeah. And yeah. kind of like that, too? Just kind of, like, what catches your eye? Ah, uh, there's the terror drums there? Um, well, again, we didn't really have, you know, we the, the closest store we had in the town we lived in was, like, a Kmart. So, selection was pretty, pretty limited there. <laughs> oh, yes. Um, oh, my gosh. Um, but uh the um you know i i was just happy to have any toys to play with you know <laughs> like <laughs> they they would just give me you know either um yeah shop toys or whatever from back then you know or, or birthdays or christmas that's when i'd get it and usually for birthdays or christmas they'd try to focus on at mm -hmm. least ghostbusters because they knew that's what i loved you um, know with this gi joe line in transformers even though they're not my favorite toy lines, the engineering that went into some of these vehicles 
that they can, you know, with the parts that open up, the parts that can track, the parts are like a transformer that turn into something else. These were engineering fucking marvels, dude. For this time, oh my god, like they're not coming up with shit like this today. Right. Like just what yeah. you could do. You just look and look look at these look at these commercials, like what the vehicles can do. This took a lot of engineering and this took a lot of groundwork on a on a design level. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll tell you right now, looking at just now as a parent and going shopping for kids, half the toys aren't as cool looking or, um, no. you know, uh, complicated. I don't mean complicated in a bad way, but like complex meaning um, involved, like what you're talking about, the engineering, right? Like you just, you don't, you don't see that today. Yeah. It's just not there. And look at how they cross platformed into Street Fighter. I uh, had this slide. <laughs> In the G.I. Joe size, they put out the Street Fighter characters, which was great. Mm-hmm. Capcom is such a whore. <laughs> Going back to what you said earlier, Ryan, I, I was the same way growing up. I I had my picks of cartoons and toy lines that I adored back then, but I tended to gravitate towards things that I thought were cool-looking or you know, that I could use creatively whenever I was playing in the front yard or in the house. Um, it didn't always have to be something that was trendy, you know, because I had yeah. toy lines that nobody else even had, like Starcom. I right. collected that as a kid, and nobody in my neighborhood knew what the hell that was. But I liked it because it had to do with space travel and, and you know, technology like that. Uh, I had the Snailians figures growing up that to this day, only a handful of people I know, uh, including our bud Omega Ace Gaming, who had some as well growing up, uh, that that it never even knew what that that toy line was. So anything that had like a flashy commercial, or if I saw it at KB or in Toys R Us, and it just looked awesome and it was affordable, I would tend to go and, and take that off the shelf and and purchase it. I'm trying to remember right now what's the ones. Oof, what's what's the toy line zombie that was like? They were kind of like heavier metal kind of figures, and like there was like a gorilla that was on the one side. I think in the heroes. Bionic the, Six. Yes. Okay. Bionic <laughs> Six is that exact toy line that I remember, like because the figures were like of a different material. They were very heavy. Mm-hmm. They almost felt like they were like metal. But they were they were so cool, and those that stood out to me at that time, and it's just like another example of, or like say you know you had the the, the um, supernaturals right the hologram yes, the hologram like, it could and that was the magic of the the eighties toy lines like it could be any given month like something could just catch your eye and you're just like holy shit what is that line I'm into that now. And it was, mm-hmm. that was the magic of it. That it could be, you never know what you're going to end up buying when you went in that store, right? Even if you were a diehard Turtles guy, kid, uh, or you're a diehard He-Man, you might walk out with something else because you're like, that caught my eye. Yeah, exactly. And I know with uh, Supernaturals, which really didn't have a, a toy show to kind of kick it off, I remember seeing those in a Walgreens as a kid and just being drawn to the hologram thinking that was the coolest damn thing I'd ever seen. And, of course, it's horror-based, so that's another thing that was right up my alley. And then they were cheap figures, too. And that's why I also gravitated towards the Visionaries, because they were the same size as G.I. Joe's were. They had the hologram uh, insignias on their chests and on their weapons, and then they also had... Uh, cartoon for themselves, which was really cool. I love the storyline of that. And again, cheap figures to collect. Absolutely. Now I'm trying to look up how many episodes the original G.I. Joe show had. So G.I. Joe, a real American hero, ran, the original release ran from 83 to 86. Mm-hmm. And then it had another run, I guess, from 89 to 92. I'm trying to see yeah. 
Okay, so 95 episodes ran for the original show that I think, you know, you say most people remember, right? Right. So you had near 100 episodes of that. Mm -hmm. Hasbro has a YouTube channel where they play G.I. Joe cartoons 24-7. Yep, they sure do. Yeah, because G.I. Joe did the same thing that uh, Transformers did. They had a couple of seasons, then they released a movie, made the hugest mistakes ever with their movies, by the way. Although G.I. Even though, although G.I. Joe kind of picked up the fumble and recovered after what they did, uh, unlike Transformers, and then they tried to relaunch the show and introduce more characters that, for the most part, really didn't appeal to current and new fans because we had already grown up with the previous um, line of characters. You know, it's so funny. I'm looking at this this toy commercial right now where we had that big period of toys in the mid-'90s, right, where they were all talking, right? So they mm -hmm. put on these little backpacks you snapped on the back, and it was almost every every toy line had this fucking shit, right? And you press <laughs> yeah. the button, and it would say a different thing. And by the way, they're all probably dead by this point because they had a battery in those, right? And uh -huh. which no works in any of those. So all these talking features that every toy line had uh, are not going to hold up today, 20 years later. None of them are going to work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they usually had hobby screws in them, meaning that... You only you were only gonna find that type of screwdriver if you were uh, like a retail or a specialty place, or if your local Ace Hardware happened to have it, because they tended to use those uh, triangular screws that McDonald's toys oh, eventually right. switched to. Yep. So you couldn't change the battery out, even if you even if you wanted to. And if you even got it open, what is it like those tiny circle batteries? Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Well, and and that's probably why they had to use those screwdrivers or that's those screw types is because those are super <laughs> dangerous in the hands of kids. Oh yeah. yeah, batteries. Those are probably the same kids that ate Tide Pods of today. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> oh, here comes more of the awesome vehicles. Yeah, and there's really no limit because they could. Whereas you had a line like He-Man, right, or the Turtles, they were kind of going off their own imagination. When you had G.I. Joe, you were kind of working off existing military vehicles, right? They were kind of they were kind of using traditional military designs of, like, tanks and, and planes and stuff to kind of mm -hmm. jump as jump-off points, right? So it's like maybe they weren't exactly real-world uh, vehicles that you'd see, but they were kind of... You branched off ideas of existing stuff, right? Right. Mm hmm Yeah, that's kind of how the vehicle lines originally started. They wanted to they wanted to keep it within realistic technology and then for more of a fantasy push they started adding like unique designs and, and features to them. But they were still believable that when you looked at them, you could see that type of jet or that type of all-terrain vehicle being made today. So it wasn't too out of the ordinary. Oh my gosh, that is awesome, actually. That racetrack, that Tyco racetrack that there was just on there, <laughs> that thing was sweet. Mm hmm You know what else is amazing to me, too? You know, because there was no um, tablets then, kids weren't on the computers... It really was the only reason that such a wide market was available. It was able to exist, right? Think of just how much co uh, competition there was between yeah. you know, it and G.I. Joe and, like, He-Man, all these massive toy lines, right? They were able yeah, to coexist together, and they each one had their niche of buyers. And because, you know, like, today – you wouldn't be able to have that wide variety of toy lines, right? Because th there's not even that much, there's not even enough money to, to spread between them all. Like they, they wouldn't be able, all be able to exist. Maybe if you made some figures of your most favorite TikTok stars, kids yeah. would be interested in. 
buying this. <laughs> I'm teasing, but um, <laughs> you know, um, like I, I had was saying, that I, pogo. <laughs> <laughs> I had, you know, I, I don't have, like I said, I, I remember G.I. Joe coming on and watching it a bit on the TV. Um, I don't remember being a regular viewer. I don't I don't think I would change it purposely if it was on. Yeah. Um, recently, I just started playing that. <laughs> that new game that came out, I guess it was a couple of years ago now, but I just checked it out a few months ago. Um switch version i think it's on all platforms so um it's like a third person shooter um it's okay it's 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 not it's not um it's not the best but it was definitely it's definitely worth you know knocking out a few hours of fun that game though um you go back and forth between being uh the G.I. Joes and the Cobras. Well, you make a good point. I'm glad you brought that up with the TikTok shit because that just shows you where we're at. The ADD culture, we used to be able to sit through a fucking night, a 30-minute cartoon, right, as children. Um, yeah. Dumb down entertainment to a three-second fucking video. So people swipe up and down, kids today, swiping through three-second videos, and that's their attention span. Give me some shit in three seconds. So that just, I mean, that just shows you, we used to actually be able to sit down and watch a cartoon and there was a plot there and dialogue that we listened to. And and, yeah. and now, now we're raising a culture on three second videos. That just shows how much we've changed. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I even noticed it tonight, like I was telling you guys before the show started, I was watching the Chiefs game. It was, for some reason, technically Monday night football. That was the crew, and it was ESPN Monday Night Football. But commercials, when I and I because I, I don't watch TV anymore, it's I don't. Bridge. But but the t but the commercials they were so short, like yeah. they were packing in so much into like like no sooner than one commercial ended, they like they were on the next one, and it was almost like TikTok, like it was almost like ADD. You couldn't pay attention to this. Like, why is like I? It was almost bothering me. Mm -hmm. Like, why? Why is it switching so quickly from one commercial to the next? Like, why? <laughs> yeah, I ba I'm barely able to understand that that was a State Farm ad, and and now we're already on to the next one. Got to like, get that. Got to get that airtime in. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. They're, they're cryptic as shit now with the commercials. Like, you notice, like, they they don't even want to tell you what the fuck the product is. Like, they'll give you, like, the last second. Like, they'll give you some kind of gushy, cheese ball, cry fest kind of a clip. And then they'll be like, fucking Verizon is here for you. Like, <laughs> you're like, fucking okay. Like, you, they, they give you, like, this, this sad-ass clip of, like, families and stuff hugging and holding each other. And you're like, okay, what, what is, what is this even for? And then it just says on the little corner, Verizon at the end. Okay, Verizon cares. All right, Verizon, you fucking care so much. Right. Yeah, the '80s and '90s, you definitely had a clear understanding of what they hit you over the head with the brand, or the slogan, or the song. There was no cryptic anything. Like you knew no. what you were watching. Mm-hmm. They wanted it to be stuck in your head, the slogan or the or the or the logo or the song. They wanted you to like be singing it after, like in the eighties and nineties. Now, now you don't even know you don't even know what you saw. Like what what did I just see? What even was that? Now, I will admit, Herbie's did a good job with the commercials tonight that I saw. It was very clear. They have the meats. Watching. They have the meats. <laughs> but they, they were, you know, as out of all those commercials that were showing during a football game tonight, uh, the uh, the Arby's commercials definitely were the most funny 
And not to be fair, is that because you only eat meat? Did that one call your attention? Did they have? No, <laughs> oh, no. I'm gonna say no because like one was actually for breaded chicken nuggets, and the other was for uh, French fries, and uh, kind of yeah. Like anyway, I'll you gotta you gotta watch those. Um, try to catch an Arby's commercial because it was it was pretty good. I was I was sort of impressed by them. Um, the rest of it, no, no. The rest of it was just ADD, cut in, cut out garbage. Let me just say, I'm maybe five flow progressive insurance commercials away from a shooting spree. <laughs> I don't yeah. mean that, and I don't mean that as a threat. I'm just saying psychologically, if I have to see fucking flow and her bullshit ass commercials anymore, God, they they beat to death some of these terrible characters that they come out with. And they just give them to you for 10 years and they don't switch it up. They don't switch up the campaigns. They get so lazy with it, some of these companies. Uh, apparently, it's more important for them just to spend the money on marketing than it is and get the airtime than it is to actually get the, the new commercials going. Right. Yeah, it's just it's just like they they want to be there's an obnoxious level right to to the commercials you say like they're not like the more obnoxious the better almost like if you remember it and and it's just it's kind of gross like how, how annoying they get with with a lot of this stuff also has Shaq ever been in more commercials than right now because he's in every commercial there is I think Shaq is just half the commercials there are, period. I agree. I, again, after watching commercial tonight, yes, he was in about half the commercials. Good lord, Shaq is making money. I mean, at least people are still interested in hiring him. You know? Not like, I mean, you would think almost at this point people would be like, who's, who's that guy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's that, right? Who is Shaq? Right, that's what I'm saying. Like, you you would think, but apparently he still has a market. Slayer says you're jealous of Shaq. Jealous of his pocketbook. Damn right. <laughs> and, and and let's let's be clear too. Shaq has no shame, and what he will we, he will do a commercial for. If somebody's like Shaq, we got some ass cream. Can you do a commercial for some ass cream? He'd be like, you know I love this Sha this Shaq ass cream right here. <laughs> it knows no bounds what commercials he will do either. Uh, did he do some foot fungus commercial? <laughs> Probably. Like, I, I'm sure I've seen one like, you know, the tough act and to act and He did like um, the hot and icy people, hot. That was where. Oh, yeah, icy hot. Yeah. yeah. Look, icy hot all over. He had a Papa John's commercial. He had. He was um, he was in Papa John's tonight. I saw him dipping his stuffed crust as a uh, in the in the butter sauce. <laughs> he had his um. I don't know if it was his personally, but there was a sports drink that he used to endorse back in the nineties. All sport. I remember that. What happened yeah. to that the business? They got out. They got rid of that a long time ago. All sport. I'm pretty sure that tasted horrible, right? It was like, it was like imagine Powerade but worse. Like some <laughs> Powerades are really bad. Like, like when you compare, like, like Gatorade's pretty even with the stuff tasted decent. Some of those Powerades were just gross. They tasted like cough syrup. All Sport was like a dollar store version of Gatorade. Which is funny because some dollar stores sell Gatorade for a dollar, but. Right. It was, it was a very like bland, cheap tasting formula. Cause I I remember drinking it a couple of times, and I was not impressed with it. You know, with this with this GI Joe line, one of the problems I have, like as far as space, right? You guys know how big space is an issue, right? So this line for me, when you got a lot of vehicles, where do you fucking put them? That's the thing about collecting this line. It's when, it's got to be unattainable to have yeah, all of it. To have imagine all of, having I mean, every vehicle. The vehicles would be like your whole toy room. 
Well, I'm sure you could have every vehicle or every playset, but it, they'd probably have to be in box. Right. Like, you couldn't really play with them unless you had a whole room dedicated to this line. Maybe even two rooms. Right. Like your whole basement or something. If these people couldn't even fit flag in their house, right. how are they going to even have two rooms to put all the rest of the stuff? <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I look at every vehicle. Stuff. They... um coincided with a, a smartly packaged cartoon clip right from the show that they could put right you know like they, they didn't have a they didn't have a vehicle that they didn't have the toy clip uh, the the cartoon clip to match for it it was a uh it was an gotta be a either mid or early 80s one that we were just watching there like... the joe room the cobra room And, and, like and a hole looking, in your wall. <laughs> as a, as a collector looking at these, oh my god, the amount of parts you can lose for these fucking ships, right? Mm -hmm. Like the missiles out the ass, little snap ons little wings, little all this shit that you know kids broke. I'm right. Broke, lost, everything. Yeah. Right. Um, imagine how you would find these these vehicles complete. Like you you just have to think like eighty percent for sale are not complete. They have to be missing stuff. Mm -hmm. That's why a lot of these accessories go for pretty high prices nowadays on, on eBay. You know what I noticed? It's kind of a side topic here, but like speaking of vehicles, like Tyco, right? Tyco ran the shit like in the 90s, right? With the, with the remote control stuff. Mm -hmm. I've noticed that there hasn't really been a company fill that gap since you notice that like they had they had stuff for all kinds of remote control vehicles you don't see them as much and if you do they're not near the quality they used to be either of like no no not and at all dude, those vehicles were fucking fast those Tyco vehicles back in the day you would put yep. those on the street and they, it, i swear they would go like 15 miles an hour some of those some of those little cars the Scorcher 6x6, which was one of yeah. the Tyco vehicles I wanted the most, that thing hauled major ass for being an RC, RC car. And that's one of the only ones I bought uh, since then to get back, and I do not have the battery pack for that, but I want to get the battery pack. The 9.6 or the 6V? Yeah, it's, def it's definitely the one that looked like... Uh, it looked like when they have a bunch of double A batteries, like in like a black silicone. Oh like, yes, that's uh, a nine point six V. And you snap in, yeah. Yes, I hated the cords to that because attaching those was a yeah. bitch. And you charge those motherfuckers up for four hours, and you get like ten minutes on the street with the thing, right? <laughs> yeah. You always run right out of batteries with that thing. Mm hmm. It was no like you charged it and played with it a couple times. No, you charge that fucker four hours. You got 10 minutes, you were done. <laughs> you were happy. Yeah. And that's if your car didn't do anything out of the ordinary besides like a 360 spin or something. Like, I had one uh, that was one of my favorite cars. It was made by XRC, not Tyco, and it was called the Air Devil. And it had a hydraulic press on the bottom. So when you flip the switch after reaching top speed, it would pop the car off the ground. And you could get some major hops out of that. But the more you hopped it, you could see how it was draining the battery. And yeah, yeah you maybe got like 15, 20 minutes out of that after charging it for a few hours. And the other problem was with the speed was how easy it was to damage them. Because you would, you would even if you're trying hard not to, you would hit the curb. And then you just snap either the front end or like <laughs> snap the metal off a wheel. You snap like the hubcap piece off the wheel, or it was mm -hmm. just so easy to do. Do you remember the um the fast tracks one? Yes, had, I like, do. Tank tracks. treads. Oh man! And I remember my friend had one, and and he'd always had to put the rubber back on it because it would fly off somehow. After a while, the rubber track would fall off the thing. Mm hmm. Yep. Yeah. Same with these. Same with these GI Joe parts. I remember. 
my uncle and I, we used to collect these, and if the damn weapons didn't fall off of it somehow, it was usually like uh, a piece of uh, equipment that a figurine had or that some insignificant piece of the vehicle would just come off because it wasn't sticking well or it didn't snap into place like it should have. Whatever that one was right there, look like you would shoot some kid's eyes out. You see how far it's <laughs> going? Hell yeah. I remember these one, these kind of gimmicky things, right? Where you would spin it and it would fly. Yeah. They were, they would fly pretty high. Yeah, they did. The the pull string or zip cord. Yeah. Launcher, yeah. These were a very popular idea too. Like uh we had there were two different lines at the time that used that type of technology there were the dragonflies and for the girls i believe they were uh sky princess i think it was and they were all based on that technology like that type of toy line became popular for a while but then it just it died out again it died out so quickly i, still see I, I love when i see some of these toy commercials and you can tell, like, some kid recorded the cartoon uh, that these commercials were on, on top of, like, their dad's football VHS that had been re-recorded over, like, 50 fucking times. <laughs> <laughs> like, the tracking is so bad, it's, like, on the middle of the video, and it just go, it goes from the middle down. You just tell how fucked up the tape is on that VHS. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, can just, you can just imagine the wear on it. How many times that, that video got re-recorded over? That's just part of the quality. That's part of the appeal. <laughs> don't give me don't give me clear and high def presentation. Give me static and give me grainy lines and everything. That's right. The way give God the, intended it. Give me the tracking bar at the bottom. <laughs> well, let me ask you this because I've wondered this because I don't have a I have a CRT like a twenty seven inch CRT, but I almost think it's too big to know. So so this is a this is a Chris question here. So, see how, like, we're watching this and it's in a 4 by 3 so we're getting the bars on the side? Yeah. If you put this on, like, a DVD and played it through a CRT, like a typically normal size, say a 13 or a 19-inch CRT, would you just get a perfect just – like, there wouldn't be the black bars, right? Because we're getting black bars because it's, it's in a 16 by 9, right? Or am I wrong? Uh, you're, you're wrong because the video itself is 16 by 9. Okay. Um, you would need video to be rendered again in four three. Okay. Not have bars on either side. Because to me, that would be the dream of watching a lot of these old commercials on a CRT, is that it would just take up the screen and you wouldn't get the black bars because they, it, it drives the fucking just drives me fucking crazy seeing black bars. I don't know why. I just feel like the screen's being wasted. You're not getting the full picture. But so you'd have to re-render in a four by three aspect ratio. Yeah, the whole video. The, right. Because um, because then what you're gonna end up having is you're gonna have bars on top and bars on bottom on the four on the on the CRT. <laughs> Horrible. Because <laughs> uh, then you know because that's the only way for it to fit on the screen. So I just want like. In, in like my office in the corner just like one of those old wooden console TVs just playing like 24 like I'll, I'll like loop it on like a device or something like even like maybe a, a Pi 3 just playing 24 7 like toy commercials or cartoons I just want it just going all day just in as a background piece M maybe I'm crazy but I just want that in my office just like make, make it happen I know I want it to and but I want like I'm saying I want a perfect four by three representation. Oh, be, I, I think it'd be different with the pie if you had the pie doing it. You could probably adjust the output to make it work. Right. I thought you meant just taking this video off of YouTube and playing it straight on a TV, right? Well, the key is like I would compile my own okay. kind of like my own collection of like you know just so that they could be playing all day. Or, or, or it would work on, like, a device that plays, like, MP4 videos, one of those little devices you can get on Amazon, maybe hook up a little uh, USB thumb drive to the front, 
and then kind of just have it maybe shuffle through just cartoons and old commercials it would just be sick. Mm-hmm. I'm going to stay on you until you make this happen. I really do want to make this happen. <laughs> and I want on top of the, the wooden console TV, like, yeah. uh, like, a, like a full Sony boom box and like one of those telephones that's like see-through that lights up neon. I want. I to remember have a, a those. V- a VCR too. Oh yeah, of course a VCR. I want to go all out with it. I remember those clear telephones. You can Maybe see like the circuitry a, in them. A Garfield telephone. Where you? <laughs> you know what I mean? It looks just like a Garfield, but it's a phone. Yep. Put the pie think... in the VCR. Why not? Like someone we know. <laughs> oh shit! Hmm. Into this video. There we go. Oh yes, I love it. Just as soon as we end that, this dude on a Harley going a buck twenty, and a cop going right after his ass behind him. I want to. <laughs> I want to see that guy pulled over. <laughs> oh, in another, in another cop SUV go right after. Her. Nice shipwreck, Lady Jane. Sometimes oh, out here they, nice. they choose not to um, pursue some of those. Well, the thing was they were gunning it, both the cops, but they didn't have their lights on. Uh huh. I don't. I don't know if they want. They don't want him to know yet that they're on his tail, so they're gonna try to creep up. Well, yeah, he's definitely getting, he's definitely getting a ticket. <laughs> All right, so I think that's going to do it, guys, for our uh, GI Joe tribute. Thank you for watching our Super Mega Nerdcast. I want to thank our roundtable, Jesse of Zombie JLT One, Chris of Big Family Gaming, our producer Brady, and I'm Richard Ryan. And we'll catch you next Friday night. If not, catch us Saturday night depending on work schedules and everything working out, and we'll see you there.